All right, I'm back for another higher order function with JavaScript arrays video. And in this video, I will talk about uh, filter. Filter is actually, to be honest, it might be my favorite one of these. It's just, it's lovely. So let's look at what, let's, so filter, what is, the word filter means, it's, it's called filter for a reason, just like you might filter your water and, and filter out all the stuff you don't want. If you have an array that has some grime and stuff in it, you can filter it out. So how do you do that? It's a higher order function. So what that means is it expects as an argument some function. And what that function is, is a function that receives as an argument itself an element of the array and based on that element, it should return true or false. And I always forget this. I think it returns true if you want to keep it and false if you don't want to keep it. So even though it's filter, you'd think true, I want to filter it out. I think it's true, I want to keep it. We'll have to try and look up the documentation. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same thing. So this is where we last left off with this reduce stuff. <laughs> You're still here after that. Thank you. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna keep this same little silly array and I'm gonna, say, I'm gonna write a function and I'm gonna say um, it is, you know, uh, oh, interesting. Let's, hmm, let's call this function um, is even. So what this function is going to do is it's going to take a number and it will return true if it's an even number or false if it's an odd number. So it's going to, if num, and how do I do this? I can use the modulus operator. The modulus operator, see the coding train video from Golan Levin about modulus, is an operator that gives you the remainder of division. So if you divide something by two and get a remainder of zero, it's an even number. So if num modulus two equals zero, then I want to return true. Otherwise, I want to return false. Now, I always do this because this is the kind of person I am. I will write it in seven lines of code to make it say exactly what it's doing, even if it can be done in one line of code. But this is, this is a moment where I think it's worth, today, these videos are a little bit about reducing the amount of typing. It's worth saying that I don't need to say, if this is true, return true. If it's true, just return the fact that it's true. So this evaluates a true or false. I'm gonna just return that. So I can do this. Now I should be able to say, whoops, I should be able to say vals.reduce is even. So the question is, is my array going to have only left in it the even numbers or the odd numbers? We could look it up in the documentation. I could speculate, but we could also just try it. Now, I'm pretty, oh, this shouldn't say reduce. This should say filter, of course. I should be filtering based on this function. Hello. And... I'm pretty sure, let's just double check, I'm pretty sure that this is the case where it creates a new array and returns back like, I, like we saw with the map function. So if I save this here and I hit refresh, we're gonna say, okay, so that's the original array. So this is not working yet. I wanna say vals equals the new array. So I'm gonna overwrite that variable with the new array that's been filtered. And I'm gonna hit refresh. And there, we only have the even ones left. So we have the even ones left because this returned true. So if it returns true, keep the value. If it returns false, don't keep the value. And by the way, what I'm gonna do with this later in like a particle system example, is I have an array of all these particle objects. I could just say, filter out all the ones that are off the screen, or filter all the ones out that alpha has uh, faded out to zero. So that's why this filter can become really, really useful. Um, so let's now shorten this using ES6 syntax. Um, one thing I might wanna do is just use this as X. Right, change this to x. Now I'm gonna get rid of function. I'm gonna get rid of the name. I'm gonna put the arrow syntax in. I'm gonna forget about this. And I'm gonna uh, get rid of the return because it's assumed. So basically, this is what I can do, right? This is basically, I can now write that. I did that really quickly because I'm kind of assuming you've watched my previous videos where I stepped through that more slowly. But basically I can say, hey, filter every value x based on the, uh, whether x modulus two equals zero. So this should give me exactly the same result. Again, this is the thing. This is why I hesitate. This is so unlike me. I don't, I, I, would, I would write this in like 10, but there, there's a wonder and beauty to this. Because even though I feel like this is cryptic and a little harder to follow, there is a moment, I think, after you get used to this arrow syntax and write a lot of these um, functions, 
and I'm, the comments are going on that I'm going to look at in a second, that you start to get used to this and this, this becomes a bit more intuitive and it actually can make the code more readable. Oh, there we go, it worked. Now I can say, let's just filter it out for the odd ones, equals one. Now I have the odd ones. I could say, not this. And that would be, that's like not the odd ones is also the even ones. And we can see, there we go. So wonderful. Um, I'm going to take a look at the chat and see that I, I got some extra notes in there. Yeah, okay, so um, Alka in the chat points out that you can filter by truthy and falsy values, not just explicitly true or false. What does that mean? Um, in other words, I could filter out, um, let's say I had an array of objects and a few of them were undefined you know, we're empty, I could filter out any spots where something's undefined. So many things in JavaScript can be sort of like thought of as false or true based on its, uh, its value. Like if an object exists, it's true. If it's undefined, it's false. So I could say, um, so this would say like, hey, I have an array with stuff in it. Oh, and this actually, oh, okay. So I could actually just do this. Right? That's what, that's what Alka is telling me. So I could check, like, oh, filter out, just keep everything that's not undefined, right? So this, if I did this, it would give me 5421, because I would filter out the undefined. But undefined is like a falsy value, so I could just filter out the items that like kind of turn into false things. And actually, this is going to give me, yeah, right? So this worked as well. Uh, and I could say not x. Then I have an array with just undefined. Okay, so I think we've seen, uh, I think this has been good. I think we've seen filtered, uh, filter, filtered, filter, the function, filter. Um, do you have any questions? <sighs> We're not actually in the same room at the same time because I'm recording a video. There is a live chat going on. Let me check if there's any questions. Two wonderful tips that just came in from the chat that I would love to show. <laughs> this is great having a live chat while I record these videos. So let's say I wanted to do that, e that even thing again, where I, I'm keeping only the even values. I had it like this, x modulus 2 equals 0. That's the even ones. Well, that's silly. x modulus 2 evaluates always to 0 or 1, 1 being true, 0 being false in a sort of truthy, falsy way. So I could have actually done this. And that's going to keep the odd ones. And if I were to say not, I think I'm going to need parentheses. Yeah, I'm going to need parentheses around this. Um, and now I'm going to get the even ones. So that's lovely. Then um, <clears throat> there's a lot of times when you're working with strings. That's, that I've had this problem actually a ton. So let's say I have a, um, this, this is going to be useful. Let's say I have a string. It was a dark and stormy night. And what I'm doing is I'm saying uh, let words equal s.split and I'm going to use a regular, well, I'm just going to say split by space. And then I'm going to say console.log words. So you can see, ah, it was a dark and stormy night. Now, things could happen like, what if I had two spaces here by accident? And I hit refresh. Look at that. Because I had two spaces, I got an empty string by accident. Now, the truth of the matter is, if you watch my videos about regular expressions, I can be more thoughtful about the split um, what I pass into split and use a regular expression for a particular pattern to match. But even so, like if I, if, um, you might not know, I can, I, a regular expression is a way of creating a pattern. And so what I could do is say anything that's not a word character. And what I wanted to see here is, ah, whenever I do this, I always get these extra empty strings. This happened even here. So this is something that I do in one of my previous videos. This is basically a secret code for saying split by anything that's not A through Z or 0 through 9. And that has to do with meta characters and regular expressions. But actually, I'm always having this problem where I get these extra empty strings. So I could always just have a filter now. Filter by uh, S, S dot length by s dot length. So look at this. This should say, because it's true or falsy, if the string has a, 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 and not s dot length, right? If the string has a length of zero, I should filter it out. So now let's do this. We can see, oh, no, 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 that didn't work. Not, um, maybe I shouldn't use s here. Let's use uh, x. Filter x not x dot length. Oh no, x dot length. I want x dot length. Ah, the opposite. I was right. So I can use s here. I just was using s in too many places because it was a string. So word, word dot length, right? So I want to use the length 
to evaluate the word whether it qualifies or not. I could, of course, say like greater than three, right? If I want to just have only the three letter or words, this will get rid of it and a. Now you can see I only have dark storm. It got rid of was too because it's not greater than or equals to. So you can see how this filter, you can chain these kind of, again, I've got these really long lines of code, which is very unlike me, <laughs> but you can see I can chain this stuff. So I take this string, I split it up, so I have all the words, but you know what, I actually only want the words that are three or more characters. And instead of having to write a loop and an if statement and use splice, how I always do it, this is a nice, really one line of code kind of way of using filter. Oh, I'm happy about that. Okay, so uh, thanks for watching this video. I hope this was helpful to you about filter, and I will come back in one more video. I might as well, I believe I've covered sort somewhere. <laughs> but maybe I'll make a standalone video that's just about uh, the sort function, and that'll be the last one that I'll do in terms of these higher order array functions. Thank you.